All right, so we got the SC600 pair, and now we've got the Nanolux SC600DE uh, at 600 on each side. I'm about to fire the 600 watt DE single element CMHs from Call to Lux. Alexa, turn on Studio Grow Main. Okay. I'm gonna hide behind my phone here just in case. It usually takes like 10 seconds before the nano looks to fire. That looks like a pretty good fire. So far, so good. Uh, keep our eyes on these ones. Mm, that looks kind of interesting. We might have an issue here. Looks like the second one is firing, but the first one has got a big flaming blue arc to it. Oh, it's starting to come up. Yeah, I probably should be a little further away from these, but... And you can see the Nanolux Hortolux, the ceramic HPS on the far side, and the 10K blue and fixture next to it. It looks like the CMHs are coming up quite nice. These are actually at 630, um, not at 600, so I'm pushing them a little hotter. And actually, we'll let those come up to temp. If we can see. 3,000, oh, wait. Should be looking at both fixtures. 410, 420, yeah. This is the single fixture, the Nanolux Hodelux fixture. As it comes up in wattage, as it comes up in brightness. So it's getting pretty bright already, for sure. These things are going to produce a lot of light, but, yep, as they heat up and come up, we're definitely getting more voltage and more wattage. So now we're at 825 watts on effectively what should be a 1200 and what, 60 watt system. So, definitely gotten brighter. I'd say they're pulsing a little. Now we've got a little bit more of a red hue on the second bulb than we do on the first bulb, but as the voltages are stepping up, wow, the brightness is really increasing. Definitely brighter now than the Nanolux Hortolux, but the Nanolux Hortolux literally take 15 minutes to get up and going. The ceramic HPS design and the ballast design for that bulb actually is meant to mimic far infrared and deep reds to actually wake the plants up and get them photosynthesizing. It's surprisingly not talked about a lot um, and I think it's a great marketing tool. So yeah, it would take about 10 minutes for that bulb to come up to temp. The middle halide is almost completely up to temp but that HPS you can see is just barely doing anything right now. But when it gets up to temp, it really throws the light. So. We're going to get the meters under it, and we're going to see how, how, how it's going. But yeah, we're doing pretty good here. You can see the bulbs in the reflection of the glass. I've offset that so you can see those, those bulbs in their fire and fury. But they are quite bright. And again, if I can get right to it without my glass getting too pinched. Uh, I won't be able to see it now. Too much reflection, I bet. Yeah, there's so much reflection, it's hard to see. 1,276. So, 1,260 and we're at 1,276. So, definitely the bulbs wattage and the driver's wattage are true to what they claim.
that are pretty much right on the money. So the Nanolux is quite efficient. The 1000 watts had a little more or less efficiency drop. But yeah, look at those tubes. Look at that color coming off. That purple and blue coming off of the sides of these CMHs on their arc tube. That's ridiculous. But it's a phenomenal amount of light. Now the HPS, ceramic HPS is coming up. It's starting to get brighter now. And that in itself is a pretty cool little like three and a half inch, four inch long ceramic metal hal uh, ceramic HPS. I actually got two of those so I can run full 1200 watts of ceramic HPS. But I like the mixed spectrum. So yeah, we'll get the numbers and we'll uh, probably be going live here in a little bit.